civilization. People have had to survive and rebuild from natural disasters. So today we took 100 Minecraft players and had them simulate civilization that was struck by natural disasters. Players will have to survive through tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, and even meteors. Will these civilizations make it to the end? Let's find out. Let's meet our first city, Wanahakaluga. Our first city is full of money and riches and all kinds of resources. It's a beautiful place up in the mountains where it's safe from all of the enemies. It's actually become the hub of trade and that's what brought so much wealth, resources, and ore to this area. However, due to being in close proximity to Mount Wanahakaluga, it could be buried any moment in a mega super volcano. What's up team Wanahakaluga? Benny, it looks great. How you feel about your team Wanahakaluga here today? Mm, I don't know. It's currently 3.03 a.m. Sounds like you're going to do great then, my guy. Very tired. Come and sweat here. Well, you're, you're not going to with what's going to come hit this city soon. What? Never mind. Wait, whoa, whoa, what's coming? Now, our next city, Windsor, is much different than Wanahakaluga because this city has terrible infrastructure. It's got limited above ground resources, which makes it very hard to survive. But as soon as society realizes that there's so many riches below the surface and they're huge ore mines, they might thrive. But the dark side of being built on top of a giant mine shaft is that it's ripe for mega earthquakes. Our third city is Everberg. This city was built on a fertile farmland, perfect for crops. The only downside to this perfect society is that the grassland makes it perfect for F10 tornadoes, the biggest kind possible, and it could destroy everything. Our last city simply goes by paradise. A futuristic city built right next to a beautiful beach full of skyscrapers and money like you've never seen before. What this city doesn't realize is that right now, a giant meteor is coming down towards this city, bigger than the country of Brazil. And when that hits, it could wipe everything off the face of the planet. Level fella, level fella. Yeah. Hi, dude. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Good luck, guys. You might want to start preparing. No! Don't leave us. Help us. I can't help you. I'm the god of this country, guys. What do you mean help you? Now, I've assigned staff members to each civilization to explain what their purpose is. In order to become successful, the cities must battle to see who can collect the most of these three resources and complete two quick challenges. We first had the players create housing and contribute to society. Now, the mountains of Wanahakaluga look pretty spectacular right now, and everyone's getting their jobs, but I swear I heard something in the distance. Yo. Hey, 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 hey. Me and this guy, we are besties. We are friends now. You guys are? Yeah, he's from Norway. He's from Norway. I'm from Ireland, bro. No kidding. You guys familiar with volcanoes? Bye, right, bye. See ya. Go talk. All right, talk. all right. Hey, guys, look, I'm just saying, if, if, if a volcano comes and you die, you're out. Team Wanahakaluga knew the volcano could erupt at any moment. And so the team rapidly worked to build underground bunkers to protect them from the volcano. You guys make a little bunker down here? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. Please yeah. leave coal. Oh, Wait, can, we, can you give us coal? Can you give us coal? <laughs> no. Now, I don't know if Wanahakaluga is going to make it, because early on, it didn't seem like they were off to the best start. Even though they were friends, these guys seemed pretty casual, considering a literal super volcano was about to erupt on them. Let's flash to Windsor. Now, I, when I tell you I did not expect this, I did not expect this. I warped over to one of the locations, and this is what one of the team members was saying when I got there. Okay, guys, warrior bunker. The warped warrior bunker. Team Windsor, what are we working on here, guys? Okay, we have the warped warrior warrior bunker over here so um this is where all the warriors are now early on i hear this and i think to myself this right here is a team of champions they're not messing around they're not becoming friends they're literally whipping each other into shape which is what we want for a real civilization i'm excited for team windsor that's pretty smart man you're, you're gonna want to be able to take care of yourself before you attack anyone what, what do you think your natural disaster is who knows maybe your npc there will tell you go talk to him what's he say oh occasional earthquakes okay sheesh earthquakes oh can we get like each get a Bedrock. Can you each get a stack of bedrock? No, but I hope you guys get working quick. Wow, look at these guys. I would not want to be a part of Windsor. I'll tell you right now, this society is crumbling here. I mean, look at this. It probably used to be so beautiful, but just as nothing now except a small batch of final survivors down here. I got a bunch. I got a bunch of stone axes. Anyone want one? Everberg, how are we doing? This is your second and final reminder. Every player must have a house and a job or your city will be nuked. But we're screwed. Hey, what's up, Paradise? You guys working on your houses, huh? Now, Paradise Island has a problem, and it's that it looks really good, but it actually has the worst access to resources of any city. The odds of these guys making a cool base is about zero. Yeah. We are making the coolest underground base ever. By the way, this is pretty incredible because this is our first civilization that had a board with jobs. And this is what we need to make a functional city. They have a priority board. Are you guys kidding me? Give me rare things or plants, blocks to keep us alive. Shop, free flowers. Look at this. The world seed vault. You created the world seed vault. Are you kidding me? They're literally trying to preserve human history with one of every seed in the game. This you could just not have expected. That's unbelievable. Wow. Paradise is really taking the name seriously here. 
they live in one of the most beautiful areas, but to actually go through and make a team priority board like that is off the charts. I mean, look at this place. I just hate to imagine what's gonna happen when that tsunami comes, I really do. As we talked about earlier, societies are racing to see which one can get the best economic output because we need to make them functional cities before we can destroy them with mega earthquakes and mega tsunamis and even more exciting things. Why don't we check on Everbird? Can I show you the inside of our bunker? Yeah, let's see it. So guys, here's my here's my question for your team. What, 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 what are you guys yes. gonna do if, if the tornado starts underground? Well, first, oh, we're, we need we're gonna call. make it, we're gonna sound an alarm and then everyone's gonna get in the water for the yeah. Because we don't know how big the tornado is. They're probably gonna be like EF30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it probably will be. We also need somebody, like a watch out, like somebody that looks out for something. So they, they wanna we look out, that's pretty smart. Now as the society started progressing, we started seeing to-do boards pop up in more areas. We started seeing more forms of leadership. We even started seeing players campaign to become the team's leader, promising them success. Oh, everybody, we need to expand this. If we want roommates, we need it to be nice and big. Now that honestly shocked me because every society is being so unique right now in how they're building. This is the first one we've seen where they're creating the full on apartment complex because since they think they're limited on resources, by the way, if they just dug down, they'd realize they're definitely the richest. They're working so smart right now. Now that all the cities have successfully created a house and contributed to society, we can see the economic output of each here, which means our winner is this one. Now, before we hit them with their first level of natural disasters, we have to have them be a functional society. Otherwise, how could they rebuild? So our next goal, just create a quick town hall and elect a leader. We need a leader. Yes. Get up everyone here on this sand pillar. Everyone, get to the sand pillar. So guys, Smirtono is trying to elect a leader, but the other survivals of Everberg are creating an underground mine out here in the corner, and they're not following. They might split off and create a new society. The problem is, if they do spin off and create a new society, the two unique societies could wage war on each other. This is risky. I wonder what's going on in paradise. We have a base, like a really big base. Crouch to enter and leave, very smart. Now Paradise also came up with a pretty interesting idea. While they weren't going so hard on the campaign, they created a crouch to enter entrance because they knew the tsunami was coming and the two trap doors would actually prevent water from leaking in. This is the place. Wow. The election area. Take a look at what these guys have done here at Paradise Land. They put down their votes right here. The signs are equal to votes. This guy says he'll give them freedom. I'm going to help our nation be great. I will give freedom and make laws. I also will help with everything. When I come back, Paradise Nation, you guys better have a leader. Yes, sir. This is where one of the craziest stories begins. It's with Windsor's election process because this is an election unlike anything you've ever seen before. Windsor, who was your team leader? Who have you elected and how? We don't know. We're working on the election. Oh right now i think all of us should hold a speech everyone line up we're gonna do this speech wise we're gonna go through everyone one by one to decide a leader they literally required the entire team to give speeches on why they would be the leader. Even kids that didn't want to end up taking the podium here. And literally, I was so inspired, I felt like I belonged to this city. Hello, people of Windsor. I am DPH Gameplay. You can call me Noah. The armor I'm currently wearing is going to go to people in Windsor because I know I'm probably not going to survive until the end. But I still wish to make this place flourish. Now, this is one of my favorite speeches because this player literally offered the armor off their back to be the leader. That honestly is like the best trade I've ever seen. We're going to make a whole plan to get through this, through all these disasters. I thank you very much for listening and I hope you vote for me. I got 15 signs prepared for everyone. We got some barrels over here at the, at the back somewhere. But here's where things got absolutely unbelievable. Our city here of Windsor actually was afraid of voter fraud. And so they created their own system of voting to prevent fraud. This is unlike anything I thought I'd ever see. We could also just make it so that anyone who is running for president just does not get to vote. The level of detail that Windsor is going to prevent cheating is insane. And this is extremely important because when these disasters hit, a good leader is necessary because what we want to see is how they respond, react, and rebuild after they hit. I'll be dividing the armor, by the way. I'm not going to give a full set to one person. I'm to divide it between guys we're below we're on the ground we need food we need help but during the middle of Windsor's election, disaster struck. A player was caught rushing to the surface without enough food. Guys, oh, Windsor has two people. They're dying. They need food. They're literally please, racing please. to the surface. Please help. We need food. Now, as the two players ran to the surface and begged for help, begged for food, the city started to realize they were so distracted this whole time running for an election. They don't have a food source. They didn't even build a farm. There's not a single animal here. And everyone was this close to death because their food bars were now running out. But what's even worse, when I Ask the Windsor team how the election went. Did you guys elect a leader, Windsor? No, too hard, we don't know. <laughs> Windsor just decided after literally 20 minutes, it's too hard. And they just said, nah, we'll just be communists. We'll all share. You know what though? That's okay. After a quick break from Everberg, I can see that this divided city is thriving. Somewhere across that wall, the rich people live, but unfortunately the players can't get past it. Everberg, how are we feeling today? Looks like we have a leader here. It's Thelty. Hello, Thelty. You're the leader. Hello, hello. 
Congratulations. Tell us about your vision for this place. We're gonna build a bunker down there and something up there in case the tornado spawns underground. I feel like that's not the most inspiring leader we've ever seen before, but at least he has the city under control and nobody's randomly lighting things on fire. It's smart. Yeah, definitely. Tornado spawning underground. That could definitely happen for sure. You know, guys, they're actually destroying these silos to gather resources and turning them into extra bunkers. This place is literally preparing for the absolute worst thing ever. And in contrast to the last city we looked at, Everberg has created a lot of farmland underground in order to prepare for what's to come when the disasters start hitting. And they're going to hit very soon. Let's head over to Wanahakaluga. I don't see where any of the Wanahakaluga society has gone. Now, Wanahakaluga, we know, is preparing for the mega volcano disaster, but the problem is I couldn't find the city when I went there, and after searching for a long time, I realized some of the players were building out of wood, and others, well, they were building extremely deep down and getting close to the giant magma bubble that would soon erupt. Here they are, the entire society of Wanahakaluga now. Looks like the players are really struggling here. A lot of them have already died. In fact, this might be our, one of our lowest population cities already at this point. The problem with this society is they don't even realize the magma's there. They don't realize that the lower they go, the closer they get to the lava bubble, and the magma will soon erupt and kill everybody inside. Uh, Wanahakaluga, who's your leader? Right, listen, me. I'm the leader, and Hyman is my co-leader. Now, Wanahakaluga got a great leader. Chloris is cool. We met him earlier in the video, and he had some things to say about their progress. Do you place lava? I actually have not placed any lava. He noticed there was some lava under the base, but unfortunately, the leader didn't realize it was literally the volcano that they were trying to hide from. They were built on top of the volcano. No, you did. Where? I think someone did it. Like, I swear you did. Stand. What's going on? Let's see. Let's see. No, because down here, yeah. down here, there's it's, a giant pool of lava. It's almost like you guys dug inside of a volcano. I, yeah, you did. I, tr I tried to give him some hints, and I, I just feel like he didn't get it. So, I honestly, <laughs> hey, their leaders have now been selected. Right now, here's where we stand for the number of players left. Now that our cities are all fully functional, they have leaders, houses, and jobs, it's time to begin the disaster simulation. Here's how this is going to work, and it's pretty cool. Each city has its own unique disaster that's going to strike, but the disasters will scale up starting from level 1 and going to level 3. If the cities can't survive the disaster, they're eliminated from the challenge. Let's begin the simulation with disaster level 1. Welcome Welcome to our first level one disaster, Mega Windstorm. Players will be picked up from wind and slammed into the wall if they're caught outside. This could kill a lot of people. Three, two. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Look at them. They're all going inside. Seems like our farming village here is a little bit prepared for this disaster. Everberg survived pretty easily. Let's go hit another city with their level one. Now our next disaster is Acid Rain. This will dissolve blocks, bridges, literally anything above players, and if they're caught outside, it's gonna dissolve them too. That's exciting. Oh no, okay. Um, I mean, if, as long as everyone's under the bridge, we should be fine, but it's probably gonna burn through the bridge eventually. All right, everyone, I, I think we should start moving everything down. Anything regarding like crops and whatnot, we gotta get those uh, underneath the ground. Now some phenomenal strategy coming in here in Windsor. It's insane. They're moving the entire city below ground, but the problem is there's still a super earthquake headed their way. So this could definitely Definitely backfire in the future. I have mushrooms. You can turn us into baking mushrooms to create a food source. Now, because Windsor earlier faced a food problem, they managed to dig down and find the giant luxurious ore caves. And inside of it, it's full of mushrooms, the only food source for the entire civilization. Our third disaster is the mega sandstorm. The sandstorm will damage you anytime you step outside and cover the world in sand and snow. What's kind of funny about Wanahakaluga is this is a very curious bunch, all right? They literally knew there was a disaster and they still went to the surface as a group just to see what it looked like. Wait, oh, wait, don't go up, don't go up. While some players were upstairs looking, their leader was downstairs yelling something that would change the game forever. I got 15 diamonds, I got 15 diamonds. 15? What? 15 diamonds, it was a 15 thing. Oh my god. Check the X. and a chest plate. Our fourth and final level one disaster is a hurricane. Now this one hits paradise at a time when a lot of players weren't expecting it because I actually took a 30 minute break to try to trick them. All right, we have one very important question. Uh-huh. Is there like any even one piece of iron in this whole world. Oh, <laughs> you'll get your yeah, chance for iron. Whoa, what's going on here, oh, guys? Oh, 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 oh. Guys, get inside! Now, I would expect a city like Paradise to handle this very well. Oh, okay. Guys, get to the trapdoor area. Paradise City, how you feeling? Um, we're not doing very good. 
Now oh, guys, what's funny is there's actually no iron in this location. Um, uh, I'm actually gonna put one single piece down though, just to give them a little hint that maybe there's more. I'm gonna put that right there, and uh, they might find it and believe there's more here and keep looking. There's not, there's really not. It's just absolutely hilarious right now. All right, so our level one disasters were baby poop. They were easy, they were simple. It was more of a warm up to let players know the disasters are about to begin hitting. This is how many each civilization has lost, and this is the economic output. We have a clear winner so far, but that might change because it's time for level two disasters. So I jumped back to Everberg after an hour of letting them rebuild, and we're hitting them with the F10 tornado. This is a super tornado, and it's only level two. There's an even bigger disaster that's gonna strike after this, but none of the players realize that. What's going on, guys? Yeah, we're waiting for the tornado. You think there's gonna be a tornado? Why would you think that? Because... I'm smart. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think there's anything like that coming here. What's wrong, Zoe? Why are you rolling? Oh my. Look at the size of this one. Why are you guys running? What's wrong? Looks like we got another one here, right here in the middle of the wall starting up. I mean, just really falling apart here, guys. It's going to be a disaster if you go outside inside of this region. But it seems like they're doing okay. Most of them are just tornado watching at this point. They're, they're playing pretty safely, guys. How are you feeling right now? Pause. This right here is the moment where Everberg made a mistake that would come back to haunt them. A lot of the players were outside. They wanted to observe the tornado. Because who wouldn't? They were getting their iPhones out, ready to record a TikTok. And then, something unimaginable happened. Oh, no. Oh, no! Because just like that, the leader, the one outside, the one keeping watch, got sucked away from the team and died right there in front of his entire team. Everberg lost their leader. That's not all they lost. Four players just got sucked into one of the tornadoes, including the leader! Four of your freaking teammates just died. What are you gonna do? Hide in the bunker, I guess. We can't go inside. There's so many items out there that they dropped, guys. It might be worth getting. No, I'm not, I'm not risking my life. No, the F-10 tornado hit this civilization and destroyed the walls that separated the poor from the rich in the city. The problem is, the tornado also destroyed their farmland, their crops, in almost every single outdoor building they had created so far. Now, I told you guys the earthquake would be hitting Windsor here later today, and it's hitting right now. The earthquake is not actually their end game disaster. This is their level two disaster. So I teleported to this area thinking I was being secretive. Lover fella alarm. Alarm, alarm. They have a lover fella alarm for when I come? Yeah. Guys, this is crazy. Turns out uh, <laughs> I have some work to do on my stealthiness. Oh, earthquake. 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 Guys, we just hit him with an earthquake. Oh, no. All right, everyone, we have an elevator. We have an elevator. Okay, everyone up, everyone up, everyone here. Everyone take the resources, we're going up. What happened is it actually spawned near players who were far away from the main base, which actually saved them from disaster. Look at this. This is where the earthquake just hit. Guys, what happened? Our farm exploded. The earthquake destroyed your farm? No way! Oh my gosh, look at this, guys. But the benefit was that this earthquake revealed the cave to the players that didn't know it was here, which means they now all realized how much ore and resources was just waiting for them to harvest. So at the end of the day, it was a pretty big loss for Windsor, but also a pretty big win as well. But what's interesting about Windsor is the leader of the group that stayed together has now relocated for a second time. They went from living underground to now living on top of the bridge. And unfortunately for Windsor, the last disaster might make this their biggest mistake yet. Guys, what made you decide to come up to the bridge? Earthquake, yeah, Safety. we don't want them to die. They're safer to get above ground than stay underground. This poor team got absolutely devastated by earthquakes today. Several players have died. It absolutely destroyed multiple farms, bases, and people of the poor city of Windsor. Our third level two disaster. This one's a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a blizzard, but also this spawns with it. I don't particularly know why, but I thought, hey, why not upgrade it and make it a little more exciting and put a giant ice demon in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh no. Oh no, Delta is being hit by the blizzard right now. And there's some iron mobs spawning down here that are going to attack. Wow. Now, luckily for Wanahakaluga, they for some reason placed a random lantern in the center, and that was just enough to stop the blizzard monster from walking towards them, and thus stopping the blizzard where it stood. Uh-oh. Oh, that is absolutely rough. They have no way to go back into their mine right now, but maybe they just ride it off and just live with blizzard forever. Oh yeah, and I forgot the blizzard can also attack you like this, which is just a little bonus for Wanahakaluga. You guys better do something quick. You better get your team. Good job, guys. Now, I thought Wanahakaluga did really good. I was actually quite proud of them for surviving the blizzard. Until I went into spectator mode back to the main base and I heard this. All our team died. Died. Wait, several of your team just died? What happened to your team? What happened to your team? 
Like, they fell in lava. Was that acid rain or something? Was that acid? No, no, that was a blizzard. Your other teammates had to oh, deal with blizzard. that. Okay. Well, we lived, we lived, we, we were near lava. Fortunately, Guanahakaluga's leader didn't get sucked into a tornado, so at least he's here to help them make progress and rebuild their society and their team. You guys are running dangerously low on people, and I want to remind you, whoever has the most resources will be the winner today. Our final level two disaster before we bring out the massive level three disasters is the sinkhole. Oh my gosh. Just for reference, here's an example of what one of those sinkholes can do. Now imagine if this happens to hit their base. Hint, it will. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. oh, I ended up spawning a couple more sinkholes because a lot of them missed their main base. The city, though, in Paradise Village is doing really well. Now, at this point, all of our level two disasters have been completed and our civilizations <laughs> lost multiple players each. But the winning civilization right now with the highest economic output is Windsor. But it will also come back to haunt them when we announce what that really means at the end of today's video. Now, we started this challenge with well over 100 players several hours ago. And at this point, we're almost 75% down. Almost 75% of the people haven't even survived the disasters. But this was exactly what we expected. What we didn't expect was how the cities would respond to the level three disasters. These are the most extreme disasters. They could destroy the entire civilization or kill everyone if they haven't prepared enough. This is a giant meteor shower. And when I say giant, I mean meteors the size of like literally multiple ender dragons are about to rain down on them. What the oh, meteor shower? <laughs> now they have to go back down. Help me. Help me. Oh my goodness, Help me guys. Poor guys, didn't I tell you earlier moving up to a bridge would be a bad idea? Meteor Everybody under the bridge. Oh my god. Look at bridge. the size oh of these me. meteors. They're falling under the bridge. Guys, yes. Um, take the stop and go down. Guys, what are they doing? Oh, they're falling apart. Meteors are swarming this place. They just lost a chunk of their base from a mega meteor. Now, one of the players was so close to falling off the edge, a meteor came down from the sky, and just before they fell to their death, a random column of water saved them and they stayed at the surface. But the good luck ends here, because the next meteor that fell down was a meteor that will be remembered in civilization history. Where is everyone? Where is everyone? Where is... <gasps> Oh, oh my gosh, JVH was crushed by a meteor! Mid-sentence, the leader of this civilization was pummeled by a giant meteor. Not only just this one player, multiple were hit by that meteor. It was a dead hit bullseye. None of them survived. None of their items were seen again. And the city of Windsor was also without a leader. No, 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 no. Can anyone please? No. Oh no, he's losing everyone he loves. All he can do is sit and listen to the friends he's made over the past few hours die. What just happened, my guy? I don't know. Um, I just saw meteors and I went down. I figured it was the best strategy. The dead bodies of leaders. Leaders that really brought Windsor to a level that I thought could never be replicated. Absolutely decimated. Very, very few Windsor players remain at this point. Could this be the end for our Windsor society? The total player counts are now on screen. After several disasters of level three have taken place, we've seen our civilizations get absolutely decimated. Our second level three, it's a mega tsunami. The tsunami will cover the entire city with water. Anything in the water will be killed. And their entire base, if built too close, will be destroyed. We're down to very few players at this point, guys. Society's falling apart. Hey, Paradise Beach. Guys, what's that in the water? What's that in the ocean? What, did you guys see that? No! Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. I'm at the hey. right now. A mega tsunami is burying the entire Paradise City right now. Now, the entire city got covered in a tsunami, but you could hear the players screaming to get to high ground. They were smart to build so far away because this actually hardly impacted them. Wait, oh, okay. I almost died. Okay, 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 okay. Well, good. Weapon. Guys, this tsunami absolutely destroyed the city. Their half of it is now unusable. The scale of this is unbelievable. I mean, it, it's honestly sad. The players of Paradise Island felt really connected to the beauty that they've been used to. And some of them were actually heartbroken to lose their beach. It is so sad. A beautiful beach has been destroyed. Our next disaster is the mega volcano eruption of Wanahakaluga. The lava will shoot into the sky literally miles high. And it will rain down and destroy anybody who steps out into it. Oh my goodness. Look at what is happening here. This is unbelievable. I did not know that could happen. We are approaching the sky limit. Look at these guys. They're just here watching the volcano, not realizing that volcanoes often come with blizzards. Blizzards 
that can absolutely destroy you. Watch the health drain. 13, 12. Oh my gosh, is it gonna make it? Krabby Jam, come on, my guy. Make it into safety. Get away from the blizzard. 10 health. They're guys, they're struggling here so bad. They don't have an easy way inside. The total player counts are now on screen. After several disasters of level three have taken place, we've seen our civilizations get absolutely decimated. Now, what these players didn't realize is that they weren't actually chasing economic output. What we were tracking is the destruction they were making to the natural world. Because in real life, the more you destroy the environmental world, the more disasters can happen, which is why our top two teams will be punished. In first place, with very few players left, there's so few here. They're now trapped underground. You guys cannot go to the surface or you will take damage from how polluted you made your society. Now, over the next few hours, I hit each civilization with multiple disasters, from blizzards to multiple meteor strikes to earthquakes to everything I could think of. And almost every player died except a few in each civilization. These people were the hardest working, the most determined, but they also knew that at any moment, disaster could strike and they might not make it any farther. I think I heard something at Wanahakaluga. Looks like we got some high wind here in Wanahakaluga, guys. Some very high winds right now. Actually, these guys are being pushed right now against the wall. Even the armor stand. Oh, no. Look at that. I sure hope everyone's inside in Wanahakaluga, Villa. You guys are not going to make it. Is anyone outside? I sure hope not. Wow. The tornado is making a direct hit on their base. Congratulations, guys, to those who survived. Whoa, what's going on down here, guys? What's going on? An earthquake? Oh, my gosh. And you're... Oh, no. Look at what's happening. Less than five people on almost every team at this point. Surviving these natural disasters has been incredibly tough. The societies that they're building are literally falling apart and they're not helping them survive these mega disasters that are coming towards the end. Meteors proved to be one of the most effective tools to reduce people's population because anyone on the surface was pretty much instantly pummeled, just like these people in Paradise Island. Oh guys, meteor shower. Oh no! <gasps> oh no. Who died? Oh, no. Who died? A lot of people died. Yeah. Oh no! Trading. Oh, no. Dude, the entire city is dying now to this event. Several hours and more disasters later, each civilization was down to under six players. Some civilizations only had two. We can get enchanted books out of this. If we get an enchanted book, we're gonna 100% win this. So in order to make things fair, we finally opened up trade routes between each civilization. So these two players here were trying to collect rare items from the water to try to make some trades. Spoof just died. And just like that, our third leader fell, which means only one leader remains. These poor guys just lost their leader to the meteor shower falling from above. So with just two civilizations remaining, one player on one and six on the other, I gave them an opportunity to meet up, maybe try to create an alliance and maybe create a real civilization. Hey Tyler, would you like to trade with the other society? For sure. Now, he is the last of his people, and that's very risky to jump into enemy territory with no offerings. I don't know if he's going to make it out. Hey, I come in peace. I'm the last of my people. Do we kill him? Wait, don't, 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 don't kill him. <laughs> They're trying don't. to decide. He was backed into a corner, blocked in with cobblestone, and then lava was poured on him. They definitely premeditated this one. Tyler with 18 health, 19 health. They are attacking him. They're blocking the upstairs. They got him downstairs. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no, he's going to go down with 7-5. <laughs> oh no, an earthquake. <laughs> he might get out. Oh, they trapped him. And just like that, they killed him after a really well-executed attack, which means the farmers of Everberg were the champions of this event, the last civilization alive, and the only one to survive all the natural disasters. 